Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Shiner's new episode here at the One Success Mindset podcast on YouTube. I'm Dr. Shine, and I'm so grateful you're here with me today. I had to get on because another download happened, and I have to share this. I hope everyone is doing awesome out there as we're growing, as we're moving through dimensional portals that are helping us see life in a better format. You know, I have to start this podcast off by saying, when we learn something through experience, it may be very uncomfortable. But the beautiful fact about learning from experience is it's a free tool to guide you and direct you in how to get better. So we have to thank every situation, every circumstance that looks bleak, uh, confusing, and surprising. We have to take that lesson. And of course, it's going to lessen us because surprises are like that. Like I said in a couple podcasts ago, um, I think around my birthday, I said, when someone surprises you, it is not to engage with you. It is to throw you off your guard. So I don't like surprise birthday parties for that very reason, because you never know who's surprising. So when we have a surprise, I, I want to now take it to the concept of a look into what a controlling or bullying person will do while we're going through a healing journey. And, you know, in business, in life, in relationships, we're all challenging situations that befall us and we have to deal with it. Okay. Every circumstance, everybody we enter, allowed to enter into our lives has the ability to cause a consequence whether it's a good consequence or a bad consequence. When we allow people into our lives, we never know what they're going to do, but we do give them that chance. We always remain open. And one thing about energy is that you can feel it before it shows up at your door. You can feel the intuitive vibration that your discernment will tug upon your heart and say, something is about to happen. Something is going to be set up. So I'm going to turn this thing around and protect you. See, this is how the universe works. So the universe will already know what your enemies and your, your um, lower vibrational physical realm of individuals around you are doing before you know it. And then when you recognize it, you're like, oh my God, thank you for helping me in that situation. Because it could be so much worse. But here's the catch. When you know better, you do better. And you immediately accept what you see. You recognize it. You do not play with it. Either you want the energy to be surrounding you and, and with you because you're on that path and on that journey. Or keep it at a distance. That's how you know when situations are going to come. Because you only deal with one type of, of vibration. So it's just like I said in the last podcast or a few I uh, podcasts before, I said, if you're looking to listen to FM 102 and you're on country 95, you're not going to get the same reception of what you're in, pl planning on listening to on 102. So you got to turn that frequency to that area. Now, as we're healing it's a journey. Yeah, we feel alone. So then that way, if we look at it that we are alone, but not lonely, we'll understand that what the intuition within us is saying is get to know you because everybody else has been a distraction outside of you. So get to know you shiners. And then when you get to know you, then what you can do is then discern who's coming at you because you know what path you're on. So being alone is one of the major principles of healing because your distractors are not going to be planting seeds in your mind, preventing you from growing, right? 
or basically balancing your life to the degree where you can say that this is going to be helpful for me. Now, when we are accepting and embracing the surprise, whatever it may be, we embrace it. So we understand that we're now making a decision to meditate with it. This is what it was. This is how it happened. That's just how we roll. <laughs> we know what it is, right? What it is. So if we know how it rolls, then now we can decide how we're going to exceed it. We don't have to even, we don't have to even buy into the energy. See, not accepting the fact that the energy is trying to devour us or steal from us or harm us or hurt us is going to keep us in that fool mode, that mentality that anyone anywhere can come and take anything from you without a fight. Now on Dr. Darina Shine uh, Facebook, I just put a quote that said, if you're not willing to fight for what it is, that someone is trying to take from you that you've worked so hard and diligently for, then if you're not willing to fight for it, don't cry when you lose it. That's a harsh mentality to deal with. But if you don't deal with it, the bullies, the narcissists, the manipulators, they will always come in and entangle and entwine and pull right from you the very birth that you've in incepted. And they touch the gift before you get it. So as we're healing and accepting what it is and recognizing what it is, now we can accept it. See, the ego prevents us from accepting it because we are always fighting the reality because we're looking for the future to give us something. We're, we're putting our present moment and our present in the future, not knowing that there's issues that need to be resolved now in order to get to the future and be at peace, right? So in this acceptance, now we're not as emotional. So when things come at us and we know that they dog dead wrong and you want to be able to pop off <laughs> on these manipulators, on these haters, you ready to just like, you got to learn as an archer, as a Sagittarius, I've learned to hold my bow and arrow and sit and wait. As others pray upon me, I pray back. So then I have a keen, distinct eye for what I'm trying to target. And that target must be either uh, working with me. And guess what? As manipulators work in groups and in organizations and in, as we see, um, we're not blind to it. We understand what it is. We've accepted it. Now, how do we exceed that? How do we exceed that? Well, I'm not going to tell you how you should exceed it. I'm just going to say that for me, it's a personal reflection. It's a meditative way of sitting back and thinking on how I'm going to rebut. And I don't rebut immediately. I give it at least three days. See, my grandmother always taught me that if you give it three days, you can surpass anything. Anything. You can get over it. If you mourn the first day, if you recognize it for what it is, accept it, appreciate it, embrace it, be grateful for it because there is something that you needed to learn. You had to be lessened to get the lesson. See, in the ego, when the ego leaves you right at that point of recognition, now you're all by yourself. That's why one of the main processes in healing is to be alone, but not lonely because you're with yourself. And then the second process to healing is putting it into a position where you're not thinking emotionally, you are attacking the situation intellectually. Uh, um, you're attacking it patiently and then you are going to make the decision that you've given yourself enough time to recognize that I'm purposely and intentionally doing this. So basically that means 
that I didn't slow walked you. I didn't thought about it. I didn't premeditated it. And whatever it is I do, I am willing to accept the consequence behind the action. There is no more excuses when we are healing in 2024. The only person we need to be accountable for and accountable to is ourselves. So then the third process is once you recognize it, once you're independently um, saying this is the road I'm going, this is how we roll and this is how it's happening, it's going down, it's going down. Now you have a clarity and an understanding of the preparation it's going to take to deal with a consequence. And, And again, a consequence has rewards and it has punishments. So there's good consequences. There's good, you know, um, there's good rewards to doing anything. You know, there's, there's good rewards. So you got to make the decision. What are you willing to deal with? Because no matter what, the consequence behind the behavior is what's going to determine for you, the participant in the situation Growing, healing, what you're gonna, what you're gonna take. That's why I was incarcerated with women who had done some very um, protecting measures for their children. And when they had to serve the time because they put themselves in the position to have to hurt someone. You never want to put yourself in a position to have to hurt someone because when you do that, you minimize the ability to have a productive, rewarding, success mindset consequence. You always want to do something in the goodness of why you're doing it. And you always want to know why you're doing what you're doing. So haters, this is for you. For all my silent listening haters on this podcast right here. Listen to this. Give me a second. Let me clear my throat. Let me clear my throat. (laughs) Okay. To the haters, I want you to understand that you have a reason for hating. So if you don't want to really be a hater and you are very silently hating and you're very distinctly, you know, using these abilities to, you know, do this magic and do this spell work and do all this stalking and all this other stuff. Why not just believe in you? Why not just go and look at your life, (laughs) take some of the tools that are provided from what your hate, what your, your lovers who you love, because you have to hate them. You have to love them first in order to know that you dislike them because of that jealousy. That jealousy is the fine line between loving them and this disliking them. So take what they're doing, look at it, and not from a jealousy point of view, but maybe look at it from a perspective that how can I find my passion? How can I find what they have? Instead of saying, oh, that's not real. She ain't real. You know, what she doing ain't all that or whatever, or what they doing ain't. Instead of doing that, equate it to what you're doing. And if you equate it to what you're doing, then what you can say is, okay, damn, how can I get like that? Not to carbon copy and duplicate, no, elevate. Because when you exceed it, you've won it. You win when you've exceeded. Not to take somebody out. That's the easiest punk way to do it. No, you want to be able to let them see you shine as a success because they inspired you. Now, to my manipulators, you already know you have the potential and the will and the wherewithal to be able to handle it anyway. (laughs) You're just lazy as hell. Manipulators, listen, stop trying to get something for nothing and believe in you. And I guarantee you, honey, oh my God, the things that you could do for yourself, 
the things that you can do without having to compete with somebody, to know that this is a journey that is going to sustain you for the rest of your life. And if it's something that is going to be healing and motivating for you, fine, go do it. But remember, whether you're doing a dark spell, whether you're trying to do stuff behind somebody's back, all that's coming back on you. Why? Because the subconscious is your internal Wi-Fi. And guess what? Wi-Fi has backup. And if something needs to be coded and uncoded or decoded, you're the one with the, uh, what is that word when uh, you have the codes? You have the codes to decode, encode, or unicode any type of design that is you. So imagine your own robot being inside of you. If your own robot is inside of you, how can you run from the truth? You already know it. You've, you've been knowing who you are. And in the darkness of your mind, what are you doing? You're saying just this. Hold on. You know what you're saying in the darkness of your mind? The manipulators are saying, Damn, I know that's wrong. <laughs> I know I know that's all fucked up. Why am I even thinking like this? The manipulators are saying that. So to my manipulators that are maybe silent listeners, because you're silent for a reason, go on out there and shine. You ain't got to shine because you got to be better than someone. No, just don't care what the hell anybody else is saying and go do you. Stop focusing on other things and get inspiration from everything that you see and your life will be so much better. Now for the shiners, the shiners in the room, I want to say to you, I thank you for silently listening, jotting down the notes, becoming better, empowering yourself, because this is where the healing journey takes place. See, it doesn't have to reside under a title. It doesn't have to have an executive suite. It has to be internally justified within yourself and you move accordingly. Shiners will shine every time because they have been studying and praying and waiting just like a gazelle and a leopard. A leopard, the, the male is not going to jump on the gazelle I think it's that I was looking at some type of video and I, I, I think I'm saying it right. Well, anyway, just follow the, 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 the underlying story. So the one male animal is not going to go jump at the other animal because it knows it's going to run. It's going to try. It's going to run. It's going to, how can I put it? It's fight or flight. So maybe it doesn't want to fight right now, but it's going to run. So what happens is the prey has to sit back and design a pattern of behavior to determine how they're going to catch that prey. And here's the catch about that. Now look at it from a hater's perspective. A hater's perspective is going to sit back and look at your vulnerability risks that you possess and try to get in to get what it is you have so they don't have to work for it like you did. Now, the manipulators will come in and sweet talk you. They'll narcissistically gaslight you. They will determine what is best for the position in order for you to understand that they want something from you. So a realist will do what? They're going to come straight to you and they're going to tell you what it is because the discerning person, the shiner, is going to understand that they've been there and done that and this ain't their first rodeo and they're not the fool walking without recovery. They're not out there in that world with the beast and the demons and the goons and the goblins and all that and they have no fear. Signers, have no fear and watch how your discernment will increase 1,000 fold to whereas when 
even the mind tricks you into wanting to believe that what you want is what, what you see is what you want is what you need. If it's not what you need, what's going to happen is something is going to interfere. Something is going to remind you. You remind me of a love that I once knew. Is it a dream or is it deja vu? Now, that right there is prominent because if you don't recognize it for a dream, deja vu, it's going to be something that's going to tweak into your discernment and it's going to say, remember that. Then you're going to be able to compare and contrast the difference. Do you want to go down that route? Why didn't the last energy that looked just like this, smelt just like this, talk just like this, why didn't it last? What did I do right or wrong? Was I too gullible? Did I just give for the giving? Nah, Shiner's got to get strong and bold at this shit and it's got to stand and it's got to face this demon straight and look him in the eye to where the demon will have to turn its head. It will not be able to face you. And that is a discernment. That is a discernment. And even a manipulator cannot do it. Why? Because the human spirit specimen has been created with this thing called a a heart and no matter how deep and conniving and miscalculating a person can be when it's faced with the truth that truth is going to win every time that's why a cheater can't they'll 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 give you it's called um body language. And in criminal justice, they taught us back in the day that the body language de determines a lot of what the judges consider to be evident. Even when a person is pleading the Fifth Amendment and speaking nothing, the, the body, the language of what is being done, it can't be hidden. Because when the, the psych, remember I told you, the mind, the subconscious is like that Wi-Fi system. And as long as it's got a connection, it's going to record everything. Every code is going to be unanimous and the same. That's why when people call themselves uh, deflecting a system, they have to duplicate a code. The original is there. That's within you. That's stuck there, Shiners. So we have to now learn that when it's time to work on the healing within us, after we've been used, abused and manipulated and hurt and lied to, and even by the very loved ones that we should have always had a relationship with, we, to get over that, we have to re recognize that it's being done. Do not stay in denial. This is how, this is the final step of how we heal as shiners. Refuse to stay in denial. And when you do that, you recognize it for what it is. And then you sit back and you pray on that. And I'm talking P-R-E-Y. I don't know what that P-R-A-Y is. But you sit back and you pray on that, how you're going to discern this, how you're going to take this, how you're going to allow this to impact you. And when you do that, now you give it a couple days. If things are happening in your life and it's chaotic and you're depressed and you're stressed and yada, yada, give it three more days. So make it six. Even because the devil, you see, with different levels come different ways that the devil's going to try to interfere. But here's the thing. They may distract you three days. They may distract you six days. But if ain't nothing popping off, Hmm. They go, when the devil don't know what you're doing, then it's going to move. That energy is going to move to somebody else to stir it up because it has to do that in order to live. But the collective in this society, in this world called planet Earth, has awakened for real. Has awakened for real. We might have been distracted from the pandemic for a little bit, but we got back on course, right? Mm-hmm. And now guess what? 
to to those who try to destroy the goodness of the collective in this world, let me tell you what the shiners are now doing. The shiners are now impacted on how we as a collective can move forward by universally no longer returning to sender, but returning it to the universe because that energy came from somewhere and it's an original source. Remember I told you we have an original source. It can't be, now it can be duplicated, but it can't be uh, originated again. It's all unique. It's coded specifically uniquely for that particular code. And a duplicate is will be different from the original code. So universally, we are going to be looked at as the code that's going to decide how we are impacted by something. And now the shiners are now taking that original code and they're saying, hey, I am the original. There is none like me. There is none like me. So why should I have to hurt someone because or try to steal something from someone or manipulate someone or narcissistically gaslight someone when I'm trying to do what I'm here to do? Because inside of that code, subconsciously, there is a there is a passionate gift that's tapped in to the heart space that came from the universal source. So these energies that sit back and try to manipulate, try to act like what you're doing is, is something that's, you know, like so new to the, there's nothing new under the sun except for you, except for you, because what you bring, you bring it uniquely. So my point is the shiners are doing this new thing. And what is happening is we are developing a potential to meditate and ward off these vibrations of negative, old, outdated. You know how when a, when a, when a person has passed on and they don't realize that they have died, so they're living in this thing called purgatory or whatever you want to call it in the Catholicism, or it's uh, another name, but it's, it's, it's sitting in the void waiting to be reborn, waiting to be rebirthed. And that ingenuity of that original content is going to be plugged back into the newborn baby and not even given a chance to learn something healthy until they meet the people in which they will meet in life. So these shiners are communicating with these energies, letting them know that the time has come. And it's time to lay it to rest so we can have a healthy, peaceful environment. And then what is taking place is the universe, when people give us their negative vibration and we succeed it and we exceed that, what we're doing now, shiners, is going to our higher power saying, creator, take this. I don't want to return it to sender because all that's going to do is continue to keep the collective confused. And this energy is going to rear its ugly head once again. And we're all going to feel the remnant of it. Okay? So take this energy from me. And what I want you to do is I want you to reincarnate it and give it back to me as a gift. Just like the gift that the dark energy was or the, the flooded energy or the unintellectual energy or the small energy that has used it intellectually to destroy a lot of what we've experienced from all the pains we could have ever imagined. Instead of them using it and giving it back to us and we returning it back to them, that's just keeping consistent pain, consistent turmoil, consistent hell on earth. And then we die and come back reincarnated as the same hellion we were while we were here. But I want that universe, my higher power, Every time someone, and this is what the God's respected ones will be able to do. And so the shiners are now going to take that and it's going to recognize what that energy is. It's going to then accept it and appreciate it and be grateful for it, that it came to you. And then we are going to be saved and protected because we have to turn this energy 
over to our higher power to say, this is what I now need you to do for me. I need you to reincarnate this to be what it always was before man manipulated, before the narcissist uh, destroyed the content of character through the fake arguments that was done to distract the person from even having a peace of mind, to even recognize that there was health, wealth, abundance, and prosperity already within them before they even had a job. And then I want you to give it back to me and I will hold it in, um, you know, how you hold something in a, a vase, a case, or, you know, and you have to lock it up for safekeeping until it is time to gift it to the right individual. And even discernment will tell you who to gift your gifts to. Because if you give your gifts to the dead, the dead will not understand what to do with it because they're in a whole nother dimension. That's why my grandmother said, let the dead bury the dead. That means let those who are in the cipher, you know, if you close your eyes, you're in darkness. If you open your eyes, you're in light. You see the difference between the two. That means dark can't elevate over into light and light can't elevate over into dark. But as we close our eyes and open our eyes, it's the exact opportunity within a split second. So the point of the shiner's perspective in healing today in 2024 is to realize that the creator is exposing all those who have been manipulators, who have been narcissists, who have been people who are, are thieves, whoremongers, uh, cheaters, liars, um, those people who just want to hold people down. It's going to be your time to shine. So everything you've been puppet mastering in the back and behind the scenes, destroying people's lives, um, um, putting, putting, um, lacing people, stopping people from being a success, trapping people into your portal. You know, I look at the movie Coraline. Coraline was a very impressive movie to me because what took place in Coraline is she had separate entities. She was dealing within the mindset of separate entities. She, has, she had a physical home and then she had a spiritual home. And that spiritual home was behind the walls. And behind the walls was the truth, the darkness within uh, what she possessed within her and had no idea what it was. But when she came back to the regular home, she was just straight Coraline. But Coraline had a lot to deal with in that dark world in that those little cubby holes and crawl spaces behind the mindset. So here's what we need to do. We need to engender and we need to encompass what it is we're really here to do. Because guess what? If you're here to say that you became a manipulator because of the way people did you, guess what manipulators? Then you're here and you're um, manipulating for a reason that you feel is going to sustain you, but it's only destroying you. Look at your life. Go back over what the last thing you manipulated and ask, did it work? It's just not that time. So what you got to do is learn how to go within you and find the healing space that it takes to be able to contact your darkness and pull it out and recognize it. And when you recognize that darkness, you're able to work on it. I recognize my darkness and it took me 41 days to do so in the, in the belly of the beast, in the belly of the beast. That's why I say, even a person who tries to take a life, if it's not time for that life to be taken, they can try all they want and it'll come back stronger and greater. That's why I say, and then when we sit back and see that we can, we overcame it, we already see, we just pull the strings and we see everybody who played a part in what it was that was trying to, to, to happen in order for them not to be able to recognize. But then guess what? <laughs> We're still protected. God's respected will always be protected no matter what, because we won't be in a vicinity when you try to do your ma mastermind manipulation. We done went and did something else and you didn't even see it happen before your eyes. 
That's why we're always blessed. That's why we shiners are always protected. Shiners will sustain any and all adversities that this world can bring because we know it's only a, an illusion. Is it a dream or is it deja vu? So I have to sing it because if it's, if, if it's a dream, it hasn't happened yet. The spirit is discerning that. It's letting you know that this is what is going to take place. If it is deja vu, that means you've been here and done it before. You're no longer the fool. You should get the lesson. It was already lessened. You, you were already lessened. You were broken down. You were taken from the pedestal. You were knocked all the way down. So you got to rise up again. And there's going to be a day where you're going to wish you had stayed shining. And you're going to have more of those days when you sit back and look at the hell and the havoc you brought upon your life. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for liking. Thank you so much for rocking in the shoes you're walking in because you're wearing them things, baby. You looking good. You got that swag. You got that smile. Didn't allow nobody to take it. Didn't allow the haters to take it. Haters, get, man, come on up off your game. Stop fronting with yourself. Be real and learn who you are because we all here for the same reason. Stop hating, man. To the manipulator, stop it. Narcissist, get a grip. And <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> so I had to sing it.